The Cincinnati Bengals have officially completed the fastest rebuild in NFL history. And in only two years, they've gone from winning only two games, hiring a new coach, and changing their entire philosophy to almost winning Super Bowl 56. But how did they get to this point? How did the Cincinnati Bengals outdraft and outmaneuver the other 31 teams on the way to building a potential dynasty? Here's the timeline of how the Cincinnati Bengals completed the fastest rebuild in NFL history. Coming into the 2018 season, longtime Bengals head coach Marvin Lewis was reportedly on the hot seat for the first time in his career, as the Cincinnati Bengals were in the midst of a downward spiral that had seemed to have no end in sight after finishing the last two seasons watching the playoffs from at home. And unfortunately for Lewis, 2018 was no different for the Cincinnati Bengals, as they dealt with a multitude of injuries from some key starters, and at one point had a total of 22 players on injured reserve at one time. Andy Dalton, AJ Green, Tyler Eifert, and the list goes on. But while those guys were sitting in the trainer's office, young players like Jesse Bates, Tyler Boyd, and Joe Mixon were on the field developing. The Cincinnati Bengals ultimately finished the 2018 season going 6-10, and were almost shut up by their rivals in the AFC North. And after another losing season, the Cincinnati Bengals knew they needed to make some changes. And after the third consecutive losing season under head coach Marvin Lewis, Mike Brown and the Cincinnati Bengals fired him after 16 years with the organization. With this decision, the Bengals decided to embark on a rebuild, and the first order of business was to hire a new head coach. And on February 4th, 2019, the Bengals did just that when they hired Rams quarterback coach Zach Taylor, a young offensive-minded coach who was vital in the development of Jared Goff. In free agency, the Bengals didn't do much in terms of acquiring talent as they only signed four new players who were brought in mainly just for depth. Instead, they decided to spend majority of their money on retaining players who were vital pieces to the team last season. They also decided to let a few players walk in free agency. The most notable was Vontez Burfick, who was known for being a dirty player and was rarely available to the Bengals either because of suspension or injuries. During the 2019 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals made three trades as they moved around freely during the draft, trading their draft picks like they were candy in order to attain the players that they felt fit their new system the best. They used the majority of their capital on offensive players as their new head coach was determined to build the Cincinnati Bengals into one of the top offenses in the entire NFL. Going into the 2019 season, most pundits were expecting the Bengals to have another typical season we've seen from them over the years. 6-10, 7-9, 8-8, something along the lines of that. So when the Bengals came out of the gates on an insane 11-game losing streak, Everyone was shocked, mainly because the Bengals had a talented roster, but injuries to Andy Dalton and AJ Green would plague the Bengals once again. They finished the 2019 season 2-14, tied for the worst record in franchise history, and going into the offseason, it was clear what needed to be done to improve the roster for next season. Just too quick for it, peeling off like the whip orange. Seen the effort is piss poor. I got too much, I gotta tend to. Car payments and a rent due. Told y'all that I'm six foot, but with the money stabbing, I'm ten to. Too much that I pay. During the 2020 offseason, the Cincinnati Bengals gave Joe Mixon a massive contract extension, locking him up as the running back of the future. They also made a splash in free agency, spending a total of $134 million which is unusual for the Cincinnati Bengals, as they have been ridiculed for years for being the cheapest organization in the entire NFL. The last notable move from this free agency period was the decision to let Andy Dalton walk, as he had been the franchise quarterback for the last nine years. Going into the 2020 NFL Draft, no one, and I mean absolutely no one, was shocked when the Cincinnati Bengals selected Joe Burrow number one overall. He was the obvious selection after they let Andy Dalton sign with the Dallas Cowboys in free agency. In addition to Burrow, the Bengals also landed their A.J. Green replacement for next season and T. Higgins and a duo of athletic linebackers in Logan Wilson and Akeem Davis Gaither. The Cincinnati Bengals kicked off the 2020 season with a new franchise quarterback running the show. And all eyes were on Joe Burrow, who was considered the front runner to take home the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. Over the course of the season, the Cincinnati Bengals were catching steam as Burrow was starting to find his groove 
until on October 28th of 2020, when the Cincinnati Bengals traded their franchise sax leader to the Seattle Seahawks in exchange for B.J. Finney and a 2021 seventh round pick. Fast forward to week 11, when Joe Burrow was hit while throwing and tore his ACL. And as he was being carted off the field, the Cincinnati Bengals season went along with him. After the injury to Burrow, Ryan Finley was forced into the starting role, and he led the Bengals to two more wins over the course of seven weeks, ultimately ending the season with a 4-11-1 record. Since I blew up, everybody telling me that I'm the man. Same people gave me the finger, they reaching out for me to give a hand. In a different city and my pills came, because this tour don't happen, I feel pain. And During the 2021 offseason, they re-signed some key depth players, but where the star of the offseason was, was what they did in free agency spending a total of $119 million. And now, in back-to-back -back seasons, the Cincinnati Bengals have spent over $100 million in free agency. And that's just unheard of. But on the other hand, they lost a ton of talent. They lost their sax leader, number one corner, and even longtime wide receiver A.J. Green. And even though he isn't the same player he used to be, he was still one of the greatest Cincinnati Bengals of all time. Leading up to the start of the 2021 NFL Draft, there was a big debate about who the Bengals would select with the fifth overall pick. Would they elect to protect Joe Burrow and draft Panay Sewell from Oregon? Or would they draft Jamar Chase, who was Joe Burrow's number one receiver at LSU? The debate ended when they drafted Jamar Chase, reuniting Burrow and Chase in Cincinnati. To start the 2021 season, everyone wanted to see how Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals would look in his return from injury. And over the course of the season, Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals would develop into one of the scariest offenses in the entire NFL. It also helped that the chemistry between Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow had immediately clicked and they were produced in the same way they did at LSU. As Jamar Chase had quickly developed into one of the best NFL wide receivers as only a rookie. To finish up the regular season, the Bengals went on a massive three game win streak from week 15 to week 17. To clinch their first playoff berth, since 2015 as they finished the season 10 and 7. The Cincinnati Bengals entered the playoffs as the number four seed in the AFC and hosted their first playoff game since 2015 against the Las Vegas Raiders. In this game, it was clear to everyone that the Cincinnati Bengals were the better team, but the Raiders were fighting and made it an interesting game. But ultimately, the Bengals overcame their mistakes and won 26 to 19. This was the Bengals' first playoff win since 1990. So at this point, their season was already a success, but they wanted more. After defeating the Raiders in the wild card round, the Cincinnati Bengals traveled to Nashville, Tennessee to face off against the Titans, who were getting their dominant running back, Derrick Henry, back from an injury that sidelined him for the majority of the season. In this game, the Bengals' defense showed out as they limited the running back, Henry, to only three yards per carry. And on the other side of the ball, Joe Burrow was getting crushed all game as he was sacked nine times. But Mixon's 100 yards helped ease Burrow into the game and allowed him to run the show in the fourth quarter when he led the Bengals to a game-winning field goal, winning 19-16. With this win, the 2021 Bengals gave the franchise their first road playoff victory ever. And after the heroics it took to beat the injured Tennessee Titans, no one gave the Bengals a chance to beat the Kansas City Chiefs again, even though they had just beat them less than a month ago. But since it was the playoffs, it was different, right? Wrong. The Cincinnati Bengals did the exact same thing they did in the first game. Start slow and take over in the third quarter when they scored 11 unanswered points after being down 21-3 to start the game. As the game went down to the final minutes, the two teams were both even at 24. And in overtime, a Patrick Mahomes interception sealed the Chiefs' fate. As the Bengals kicker, Evan McPherson, hit another game-winning field goal, this time to send the Cincinnati Bengals to Super Bowl 56. In the biggest game of the season, after proving everyone wrong, after defying all the odds and becoming the first Bengals team to make the Super Bowl since 1988, the Bengals were still underdogs, this time to the star-studded Los Angeles Rams, who had a team similar to the Monstars from Space Jam. But it was the Bengals who dominated the entire game. Every time they needed to make a play, they did, and it was beginning to look like they might actually win. But Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup had something to say about that. 
when late in the fourth quarter, Cup turned into a machine and caught pass after pass to take the lead late in the fourth quarter, ultimately defeating the Bengals 23 to 20. Yeah, when I blow up, I'm a sore high like Peter Pan. In real life, be living out my dreams. If I'm waking up, it's in a foreign land. Whole wrist covered up in ice. Dealership never asked the price. I hit the molly ball with my dogs. Yeah, I swipe it once without thinking twice. Completing a rebuild is one of the hardest things to do in sports. Injuries happen. Draft picks don't pan out. It's just a place you don't want to be. Just ask the New England Jets, who have been rebuilding forever. But if you can get those draft picks to stick, and you can add the cherries on top in free agency, you might even get through it like the Bengals. They already had a solid foundation, but the injuries were plaguing them year after year. And now with the franchise quarterback and having just rebuilt their offensive line in the 2022 free agency period, the Cincinnati Bengals are looking dangerous going into next season. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment any video suggestions you may have, and you might even be featured in the next video. Thank you for watching. And I'm out. Uh, tell me why they sleeping on me.